Hello, my sewing friends. Here is how I print my PDF pattern instructions into booklet form. Hello, my sewing friends. This is not my sewing room, clearly. I wish I could sew out here. This is my back one eye. Oh man, it's so gorgeous today. I just could not resist coming out here and uh, kind of bringing you with me. I wanted to share with you how I print my pattern instructions for my PDF downloaded patterns into booklet form. I had a couple people ask me to show you how I do that, so I thought I would do that. I like this because I am able to keep it with my pattern envelope where I put all the pieces of the pattern and it fits perfectly. It's just the right size. Now, you may be a person that doesn't even bother to print your instructions, and maybe you work from your computer or your phone or your iPad or something like that, tablet. Um, if that's the case, then, you know, you're doing the best thing because you're saving paper and ink. But if you want to print your instructions, which I like to do because, I, like I say, I like to keep them with the pattern, then um, I love this method. Now, let me... Uh, clarify one thing and that is that I work on a MacBook Pro and you may have a Windows computer. If you do then the things that you see that I show you are gonna look a little different and I'm pretty sure all of the options and things will still be there but they'll just be in, located in a different place somehow. So um, just keep that in mind as you're watching how I do this and let me just show you how I do it. First, you need to locate your PDF pattern and open that. So wherever that's located on your computer, just open that up and it should open in Acrobat Reader. Okay, so in Acrobat Reader, first thing I'm going to do is get rid of all this stuff on the side so that I can have a nice big view of the screen. And I also would like to see this at 100% rather than bigger. So when I hover my cursor down at the bottom, it gives me the option to increase the size or decrease it and I'm just going to put it at 100%. I just, it's easier for me. So the next thing I need to do is determine which pages I want to print. Because clearly I don't want to print them all because some of them are the actual pattern piece pages. So um, I can page down like this or I can just scroll doesn't matter what you want to do. Um, so you just want to get to the end of the instructions. Okay, they're right here, page 16. And then page 17 is just a kind of a promo for itch to stitch. It gives you some places to go. And then on page 18, it starts in with the actual pattern pieces. Okay, so I don't want those. I just want instructions. Something else to keep in mind is that with page numbers, every pattern is going to be different. This page number here may not correspond with this page number here, but this one is the important one because that's the one that Acrobat Reader is going to use when it comes to printing. So just keep that in mind. Sometimes they're the same, sometimes they're not, but that's, that's the important one right there. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is go over here to my print icon and I'm going to click on that and that's going to bring up a dialog box and um, there's lots of stuff on here but we'll go one by one uh, this is the preview box and it's just going to show you there what you're telling it to do over here uh, my printer is this one and I want one copy of the booklet I'll have this to uh, default printing in grayscale, and I do that because it saves ink. But if you don't want that and you want to print it in color, sometimes I do that if I forget, um, you can uncheck that box, but I always check it. Then we go down to pages to print. And we don't want all the pages. We don't want the current page. What we want is a selection of pages. We want pages 1 through 16. So I'm just going to change that 1 to 16. Now, what if I didn't want one or two of the pages in that range? Let's say I just wanted pages maybe 1 to 10, and I wanted to skip 11 and 12, and then pick it up again at 13. 
and then skip 14, 15, and then I wanted to go 16 through 20 or something like that. So the way I would do that is 1 through 10, and then I would want page 13, I want um, page 15 through 18. This is how you would separate those values. You do it with commas. It's pretty simple, um, not hard to do. So let's go back to 1 to 16 because the, that's the page range we want for the instructions here. Then we go down to page sizing and handling. Got four options here and we want to go over to booklet. So you're going to click on booklet and all of a sudden your display preview has changed. And uh, it changes into something that looks like a booklet. This is turning the whole thing on um, its side into landscape mode and then it's printing two of the um, pages onto one sheet of paper. And um, this is the back of the booklet. This is the cover page. So as you turn the pages, you'll see how it lines up. I'm telling it to print on both sides of the paper because I want to be able to just turn it like pages. And pages are usually, in a book, they're printed on both sides of the paper. The sheets, um, one to four, that just means it's going to take four sheets of paper to print this booklet. And then the binding, I always leave it at on the left, and there's several options here. Left means that the binding will go right up the middle of this sheet, and you're going to fold it in half. And so when you turn the pages, this is going to be the edge of the page, and as you turn it to uh, the next page, you're going to go from right to left. So you want the binding to be on the left side. I hope that makes sense. So you're turning the pages from right to left. We turn that front page and again right to left. So that's why I always want the, the binding on the left. You have the option for uh, the binding to be on the right or the left to be tall. But see I think this is just a lot of wasted space on the paper so I just don't bother with that. Um, so left. We're going to leave it at left. And then it's going to ask for what kind of orientation you want, um, portrait or landscape. But in this case, it doesn't matter. If you change it to landscape, it nothing changes. So I, I just leave it where it is. And then you're ready to print. So just print. And uh, yeah, then you stack your pages. And then you fold them all in half lengthwise. And you can either staple the binding or sew right up the middle. And you have a booklet. Now, if you want for your booklet to be larger, because maybe this print is too small, because this is printed at 50% of the regular size, because it's printing two sheet, there are two pages on one sheet. So if you want it to be uh, bigger and you want the whole page to take up one sheet, you can go over here to size. And I always put fit because this is printed instructions and I want it to fit on the page. But you can make it any size you want. You can do it actual size, you can do it a custom scale. Say you want it at 75%, but you can do that too. But I just put fit. And then I want it to print on both sides of the paper. And the reason for that is that I want it to be a booklet. So I'm going to tell it flip it on the long edge, which means that the binding essentially will go along this long edge and I'll be able to turn the pages left to right. Now, if I wanted it to be like a tablet, I could flip it on the short edge, which means that the binding would go across here. And also, when I would flip this up, the second page that would print on the other side of the first page, this would print upside down, because when I would flip it up, I'd be looking at it right side up, even though it was printed upside down. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> it's like a, a tablet, any kind of a tablet that you have. When you flip it from the bottom to the top, then the page underneath is going to be upside down unless it's printed upside down, in which case it will look right side up. Okay, so you can do that um, or you can um, flip it so it's landscape mode and um, 
Either way, you can have the, the um, you can flip it on the long edge, which would in this case make it tablet style. And if you flip it on the short edge, you'd be flipping right to left. Okay, I hope that's less complicated than it seemed, but that's how you do it. Then you, you would just go to print and you're all set. So that is all there is to it, easy peasy. Um, I do want to tell you that there are a couple ways you can bind the edge to make it hold together so that you can then turn the pages. Um, I did this with staples. You can open it out and then staple down the middle of the page that is uh, one page, you know, it's, it's the middle of the stack. Um, if you have a stapler that can go that long, I didn't have one that would reach that far, so I just stapled up the side. But I'm not wild about this method because you have the opposite side of the staples that can potentially, you know, snag your finger and, you know, that's not fun. So I had a subscriber tell me about this and I think it's an excellent suggestion. She said that when she prints a booklet, she just stitches down the center and that creates a binding. And so isn't that perfect and so appropriate for people who sew? to create a booklet that way. So that's a great way to do it. You can do um, probably a long basting stitch would work the best and it just sews right up the side. It's nice and flat and you don't uh, run the risk of snagging your fingers on staples. So that's how I do it. I would love it if you are a Windows user, if you would um, put in the comments below any suggestions or comments you have about the differences between it, the way that it looks on a MacBook as opposed to a Windows computer. So um, if you could help everyone, that would be great. It's a conversation that happens in the comments. And so, you know, it's always good to help everybody. So, so I hope that this is helpful. I hope you'll give it a try. It's, it's a pretty cool little thing and I'm kind of glad I figured it out. So that's it for now for me and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.